at Burnett Park on the east side of Michigan's Keweenaw Peninsula. And we're looking at the Jacobsville sandstone here. You'll see behind me there are some outcrops of a tan-colored rock. That's the Jacobsville. This sandstone unit was deposited in lakes and rivers and dunes about 960 million years ago. That date is based on some recent zircon ages that were derived from sediments in the Jacobsville sandstone. Now, the Jacobsville is a fascinating rock unit. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, it was ex extensively used as an ornamental building stone. And it's very well known for its brilliant bright red color. Well, if you look behind me, that's not bright red. So what's the deal with that variability of color? Well, it has to do with the cement holding the little sand grains together. It's an iron-rich cement. And if that iron is oxidized, it's going to be red. If the iron is reduced, it's going to be lighter colored, that tan or a white color. So that's one of the interesting things about the Jacobsville. Now, other things that you can see in the Jacobsville, you have to look closer to see some unique features. So if we look at these rocks right here, these are some samples of the Jacobsville. You can see the red and also the lighter colored one. And then notice these things inside there. See those little pieces? Those are called rip-up clasps. What happened, we had a little muddier layer of the Jacobsville sandstone. It got deposited and started to stick together, started to get lithified, and then a current came along, maybe a flood or maybe some storm waves, and it ripped up those pieces of the older Jacobsville and uh, then deposited them again. We call those rip-up clasps. You can see those in various areas of the Jacobsville sandstone. Now, another thing you might see, right here, we have a piece of the Jacobsville sandstone. It looks like it has all these little holes in it. And those are where pieces of those rip-up clasps eroded out of the sandstone and uh, we're left with the uh, void space where those rip-up clasps once were located. But there's another thing you can see in the Jacobsville sandstone. And that's what these are. Notice we have our classic red Jacobsville sandstone, then we have these white patches in there. Those white areas are called reduction spots. So remember I said when the iron in the cement is oxidized, it's red. When it's white, it's reduced. And this is where we had reducing fluids go through, or we had some sort of reducing event that created these reduction spots. And in many cases, the reason this happened, if we look at this one up here, you see that black spot right in the middle of that reduction spot. That black spot is either a piece of organic matter or it is a piece of uh, an iron mineral. Something like maybe, uh, um, I don't know, some kind of iron bearing thing. And what that does is it sucks up the oxygen. So this little piece of organic material or iron bearing or sometimes manganese mineral in there used up the oxygen surrounding it, making this reduced zone surrounding that little organic material. And so these are some of the interesting features we can see in the Jacobsville sandstone. And just remember, you can also see things like rip-up clasts and reduction spots in sandstones of many different ages all over the world.